behind the puppets. I have the pleasure of meeting and talking to Naomi Oppenheim. Naomi has worked with us on The Flying Bath and has recently created two digital productions for our YouTube channel. Hello, Naomi. I'm Angel. Hey, Angel. Hello. Now tell me, how did you first get into designing and making puppets? Well, the first puppet I ever made, I made because there was an old TV show on children's TV. It was called Play Days. And they came to my primary school when I was about four years old. And we all made puppets with them. Oh. And then I didn't make any more puppets for quite a long time after that. But I always liked uh, art and drawing and painting and making things. Um, and then and I was also I was doing um, theatre stuff often. I was doing like drama when I was younger. And then when I got a bit older, I decided to go to university and do a art degree. I did that for about a year, but then I didn't really like it, so I quit. Oh. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. I had a couple of years off, and in that time, I did some more theatre stuff with my friends, and I made some puppets, and I liked that. And then I went and did uh, another university degree called Technical Effects for Performance, Ooh. which is like prop making and special effects for film and for theatre. But mostly I just made puppets because that was what I liked doing. Hmm. And then after that, I started working. I started making puppets for shows. So you've been making puppets since you were four years old. I guess I have. Oh, that's brilliant. What do you enjoy most about puppets? It's quite hard to answer. I think I find them really magical. There's something really magical about the fact that puppets are sort of alive and not alive at the same time. I find it really interesting. Um, and there's something I really enjoy when I'm making them about how they'll suddenly change from being something that I'm making, like a thing that I'm making, into being a person that I'm talking to. Hmm, you're right. Puppets are magical. <laughs> <laughs> Now, tell me, what are three things you consider when making a puppet? Um, I think a big thing is that you need to think about what it's going to do in the show that you're making. Mm -hmm. So how it might need to move and who's going to operate it. And would it be one person operating it or more than one person? And does it need to fly? And does it need to walk? And does someone need to hold it up for a really long time? And so all of those things affect uh, what you make it out of. Um, and I guess that's a separate thing. So it's like, what you need to, what do you need to, need to use to make it? Would it? Does it need to be light? Does it need to be flexible? And then also you need to think about what kind of person it is or what kind of animal it is, or what its character is and how you get that across in the puppet. Gosh, lots of things to consider. Now, you've got some puppets down here. Can you tell me about them? I can. So these are some shadow puppets. Um, and these are for a show that I've made with my friend Laurie for The Little Angel. We're working on it at the moment. It's called The Quangle Wangle's Hat. Um, yeah, these are, it's, a, it's a shadow puppet show. Um, and so these are them. Uh, there's loads of different um, funny animals mm -hmm. and people in the show. And this one is called the blue baboon that can play the flute. This, oh. is, this is his flute. Um, and then what else have we got? We've got this one. This is the golden grouse. Oh. You can see that she's got a little... Uh, little mechanism here with a thread you can pull to make her head move. Oh yeah, but yeah. how does a shadow puppet work? Well, they're really simple. So what you do is you make, you have a screen, like a like a cinema screen, or you can just use a sheet or something like that. Um, and you have a light, or when me and Laurie make shows, we use an overhead projector like you might have at school. Mm. Um, and you make your puppets out of something that light can't shine through. So I've used black cardboard for these and some of this, which is foam board that's a little bit thicker, but you could use anything that light doesn't go through. So you could use just like a cereal packet or something like that. You cut out the shapes and you connect them together. There's little uh, thread, little joints here made out of black thread. And then you hold them up to the screen behind the screen and you shine the light from behind them and you see shadows on the front and then you can make your own show. Wow, that's so intricate. Have you brought a puppet with you for our viewers to make today? I have, yeah. Would Let's like see, see it. it. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> Here he is. Oh! This is a little squid. <laughs> <laughs> and I've made him out of bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. And that's because bubble wrap is something that I have so much of in my house. I, um, I get things in the post and I save the bubble wrap. I think that will be useful in the future. And I end up with an enormous mountain of it in my house. So I thought I'll make it all into this little squid. And is that a fork? It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you really can use anything to make a puppet? Yeah, absolutely anything. Huh. If you want to make a squid puppet, you can download the instructions from our website. 
Naomi, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye, everyone. See you next time.